um, our scope of the regression line. We yesterday we were talking about how to do a confidence interval, which is pretty similar to most of the things that we do with confidence intervals, except that we focused on the slope. And so today we're still going to focus on the slope, but the only thing that's different is we're going to do a test of significance. So they pretty much work the same way, just like everything it has in the past. And we're going to change a few things, like in the introduction, we don't say we want to find a 95% confidence interval. We talk about HO and HA, and that has to do with beta, which is representing the true slope. And what you say is that the slope is zero, meaning that there is no change. And then the alternative is that there is a change, like it's either decreasing or increasing from what the status quo is, uh, or it's just not the same as zero. And then in our planning, we talk about our one sample t-test for beta, the true slope. We meet our liner conditions. And then for the t-value, we take our uh, slope minus the true slope over the standard error of the slope. The degrees of freedom are still n minus 2. And in our conclusion, if they don't tell us, we're going to assume alpha is 0.05. And the p-value works the same way. So let's try something with this. So these are all the different things that we're talking about. Again, some of the things you need to know. Um, we are talking about the slope. And when we're finding our t value, it has to do with the slope. And since we're using a t test, we're using degrees of freedom. Alpha 0.05, they don't tell us. We have a data table. And this data table is uh, wanting to know, do customers who stay longer at buffets give larger tips? Charlotte. Charlotte, who's an AP student and worked at an Asian buffet, decided to investigate this question for her second semester project. While she's doing her job as a hostess, she obtained a random sample of receipts, which included the length of time in minutes that the party was at the restaurant and the amount of the tip in dollars. <coughs> Excuse me. Do these data points provide convincing evidence that the customers who stay longer give larger tips? So here's the data. Now, once you have this data, yesterday we talked about a bunch of different kinds of graphs that you can produce to see what's going on with the data. And we're going to do that next. So first of all, we are going to take all of our information and we're going to put the time in list one and the tip in list two. And then we're going to do things with these lists. You don't have to pull out your calculators if you don't want to. I'm recording this. So you can go back and look if you want. So I grabbed my calculator. And being somewhat prepared today, I have the data in my two lists. Then I go turn on my scatter plots. So second y equals, turn them on. I'm going to select the first kind of graph. That's my scatter plot. I happen to like the plus signs as the markers. I should see x list L1, y list L2. And I want the first graph, sorry, not the second graph. And then zoom 9 is zoom stat for me. So as you're looking at your zoom, you want to make sure that you do zoom Holy moly, I have a lot of zooms in here. Sorry, I thought this would be like the one I had at home that does not have this many different kinds of zooms. Anyway, zoom stat is the kind of zooming that you want. And here is your scatter plot. So in a little bit, um, I'm going to put this on the whiteboard. <clears throat> but I also want to show you or remind you how to dump in your y equal for the regression line, in case you don't remember how to do that. So when you're doing that, after you've done this, you can go stat, calc. I use number four. And you get all your information about your linear regression line. And then you go into your y equals. And I'm going to clear this out and clear this out. And in my y1, I'm going to go with vars. I'm going to arrow down to statistics. Hit enter. I go to EQ, which stands for equation, and you see regression equation show up, and you hit enter. And what it'll do is it'll dump in what you just calculated in that um, two variable statistics from your two lists right in there, which is kind of handy. So that when I go back to graph, I see my regression line in my data points at the same time. Okay? Questions about that? I'm going to graph that now. So as I'm graphing this, I'm going to be producing three graphs here. 
so I need to leave a little bit of room. Um, my first graph based on what I saw goes up to a hundred minutes roughly. So here's 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 60, 70, 80, 90. So this is time in minutes. Don't forget to label your axes. And then off to the side here I have tips in dollars. And it went up to, what was the highest tip value? 901. Looks like. 1, yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's say. So here's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And so I start making my scatter plot back from my data up here. So as I make my scatter plot at 23 minutes, I had a $5 tip. Oops. Sorry, this might take me a few seconds. The visuals are not the greatest for me. Somewhere around there, maybe. And then at 39 minutes, 275. And then 44 minutes, 775. 55 minutes, five bucks. 61 minutes, seven bucks. 65 minutes, almost nine bucks. 67 minutes, 901. 70 minutes, five bucks. 74 minutes, 7.9. 85 minutes, 7.50. 90 minutes, six bucks. And 99 minutes, 6.50. And then, of course, we had our regression line, which looks something like this. Going through the dots, mine might be a little bit off, I apologize. <clears throat> and this is just demonstrating what your scatter plot looked like. And then we're supposed to talk about what, is it, what does it tell you about the relationship between the two variables. So it seems like if I go back and I look at my calculator, And I quit out of my graph, and I did that stat calc number four enter. When you have your regression in here, you see a 0.36 for the R. And we talked about in our uh, class that we had four, five, and six in the middle. Remember that? And that was average. Seven, eight, nine was strong. Zero, one, two, three was weak. So I would say this is a weak, positive, linear association. There is a weak, positive, linear association between, between time spent in minutes and tips left in dollars at the Asian buffet. So this first one was the scatter plot. Next I'm going to do a residual. <clears throat> 